Hello and welcome into another Blue White Illustrated podcast. My name is David Eckert. I'm joined by Nate Bauer and uh, we're here to talk about an exciting commitment into the land of Penn State basketball. Nate, uh, Jamil Brown is the newest uh, member of Penn State's class of 2022. Yeah, and uh, I don't know where you fall on this, but it, this is a big one for Penn State. Um, just in so many ways, right? Uh, not just the type of player that he is and what he will b- bring to the program, which we can discuss, obviously. But beyond that, uh, you know, kind of what this signifies to, to bring in a, a, a top 100, you know, 150, Rivals 150 guy uh, to the program for Micah Shrewsbury is, you know, that that gives you cachet as a program and indicates a buy-in from these recruiting classes that, you know, they really uh, obviously right now are, are hoping to parlay, right? It's, it's, this is what it is right now. And this is significant on its face, but it's also, uh, you know, kind of that sign of where this can head if players like this are on board. Yeah. Just to maybe add a little bit of a, a you know, quantification to that, right? I, Penn State has had two other four-star commits in the Rivals era. This Jamil Brown is the third. So it's a massive <laughs> deal, obviously. Uh, <laughs> the yep. other two, funnily enough, were also Philly and team final products, uh, Lamar Stevens and Tony Carr. So, you know, both of those turned out pretty well for Penn State, I would say. So, yeah, obviously, huge get for Penn State. Um you know, lots to be excited about if you're a Penn State basketball fan. Nate, I know you had the chance to to chat with Jamil a little bit. So, you know, I mean, it, what what went into this for him? What made him kind of decide you know, Penn State was the place? Yeah, so, I mean, I think that the there are a couple obvious storylines here, and you don't want to overplay any of them. But, yeah, he committed to Micah Shrewsbury previously at Purdue. Not – Matt Painter, right? He he committed to Michael Shrewsbury. Like that was that was his guy. That was the 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 connection. And and obviously, like that's nothing against Purdue and or or Matt Painter uh, from the kids side of things. But that was why he wanted to go to Purdue in the first place. And so when Shrewsbury left Purdue to take the job at Penn State, that really that kind of upended that dynamic. And you saw the fact that P- Purdue wasn't really one of the the considerations at the end, right? It, it wasn't one of the schools that Penn state had to beat out uh, to, to get Jamil to, to commit to Penn state. So, yeah, I mean, I, I yes, uh, a big deal to have that relationship. I think Adam Fisher, the, the Penn state's assistant coach, the top assistant uh, had very strong relationships and was kind of the lead uh, on this one for Jamil you know, those, those two relationships being as strong as they were. And then to have him take the visit that he did to Penn state, he did not have a relationship really with, with Penn state prior. I I don't think that Penn state and he would say the school that he would have considered was a program that he was considering prior to Shrewsbury coming to Penn state. So you, you have that element, but you also have, okay, yeah, you have a strong relationship, but, now you actually have to back it up with, can you see yourself here? Is this a place that you can actually envision yourself being part of this program and, and going to Penn State? And ultimately, it was the visit that, that did that for him. He, he did see himself at Penn State. He saw the interactions and the relationships with the guys that he would be playing with in coming years and thought, okay, this is, this is strong. You know, this is, this is a place that, It was it was uh, an interesting conversation because, uh, again, like <laughs> there, there's a little bit of a, a leap of faith element to this, which I think if you're if you're a Penn State fan, you have to be so encouraged by because the first sell is not, hey, we need fans to be on board and support us. No, it's you got to have the players. You got to have the players. They have to believe that this is a place that they can win. And he does. Yeah, it's that's an interesting point, because I think if you look at 
even some of the guys that they managed to bring in from the transfer portal, uh, you know, guys like Greg Lee, guys, a guy like Jalen Pickett, you know, they're making that leap of leap of faith too, to an extent. So I, I think that, you know, the staff has shown that it, it can, it can, for lack of a better word, sell what, what, you know, they're, they're going to, they're going to put on the, on the court to these kids at, at high level kids. So that's important. Um, if you look at, you know, Penn state's class so far, you've got, Evan Mahaffey, classic versatile wing. Uh, you've got their point guard, uh, Kanye Clary. Uh, and now you add Jameel Brown. So what kind of player is Jameel Brown? Where is he going to fit in this dynamic for them? He shoots better than anybody else. <laughs> and that's the deal. <laughs> is Right? I mean, look, like it's again, you know, there's, there are these building block elements of what works and what doesn't work in basketball. And uh, I asked it, I, I was very specifically, Hey, what's, what's the strength of your game? And he's like, yeah, you know, my shooting, I, I shoot it pretty well. And I, I said, what's your range? Where, where can you shoot it from? And uh, <laughs> classic shooters answer from anywhere. Ball's going to go in from where he's going to take the shot. And so that, that type of confidence, the way that you carry yourself, um, all of those things tend to produce positive results. Um, and, and that's not to diminish anything else that he does. He can, he, he defends, um, you know, he play off the ball. All of those things are part of his game, but uh, when the ball's in his hand, when he has a, a shot, he can create a shot for himself. And he can take a shot, and he can make a shot. So those are those are all huge, huge elements for Penn State to bring into this class. Definitely, I was I was watching some of his film before we we hopped on here, and, and can confirm he will shoot from anywhere, <laughs> uh, and it goes in. So yeah. you know, it's uh, he doesn't really strike you as as you know a super athletic guy. You know, I don't I don't think there was a dunk in any of his his highlight films, but he you know he finishes at the rim. He can create for his teammates, and he shoots the ball. So uh, I think there's plenty plenty to be excited about. Um, you know, we, we want to keep this this one kind of quick. So I guess, Nate, just to kind of leave us off here, obviously you've, you've been covering this program for a long time. You're, you know, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a change, major change, not a little bit of a change here. For this new era of Penn State basketball, just leave us with, how important this is to kind of get this first cornerstone, um, first cornerstone recruit for them. Yeah, it's it's. I, I, I hate to take I hate to to put things in too broad of a context because the the reality to this commitment is that it will be short celebrated. In that, yes, his is the one that can. St- is important, yes, but also it's how it's seen as the opportunity and the avenue to start something and bring somebody else in. And I, I'm not like there's maybe I'm beating around the bush here, but two of his teammates uh, right. at for Team Final, you know, are very high, 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 the highest priority recruits that Penn State <laughs> has left on the board for the class of 22, uh, 2022. Uh, obviously, depending on the service that you're looking at, the number one recruit in the nation in Derek Lively, uh, who's a big, he fills that body. He's, he's, dude is awesome. He's really good. And it's, and, and it's the, it, that's a, that is a program history altering type of possibility to have that type of kid, even really considering Penn State, let alone the possibility that he'll come to Penn State. Um, but then also, uh, Adafe always, brother uh otega is another high priority commitment or, or high priority prospect for penn state to to recruit and so yeah he just picked up jameel brown and they love him and he loves them and that's great but if if jameel brown could his commitment could parlay into uh an oa commitment all right now now you're talking now you're talking the the you know the tony Carr and Lamar Stevens, right? Like that's that second element that has been so hard to come by. Like Penn State has recruited a big player, right? A, like in the past, that that has happened. It's just 
as you mentioned, extraordinarily rare to see that come in pairs or in threes in one class. And that's that's kind of where this leaves you. Uh, if you're the Penn State basketball program is, yeah, enjoy this one because it's huge and offers a, a, a sign of things to come. But also, they're going to have to stay on. They're, they're going to have big, big work to do in, in the coming days and weeks to, to try to finish out this class strong. Definitely. Definitely. And right, as you mentioned, two huge, huge priorities for them are uh, his teammates. Um, Penn State has plenty of space uh, in this next <laughs> class. So <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely some 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 more to come, uh, whether it's those guys or, or, or other names. So uh, we'll have all of that coverage for you at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Uh, um, you know, Nate and I both contribute to the the hoops recruiting facet of things there. You can also find football recruiting, you know, camp is going on right now. All the all the fall camp coverage that you need is available there. So yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time.